Hello, this is Deborah with Redirecting, and I'm going to be reading two messages that came to us out of Africa. Two different messages um, with uh, two different opinions about uh, the ambassador's speech from the AU and about the returning to Africa. Now, we've received, Watchman and I have received a number of messages, uh, some very um, good, some not so good, meaning some that were a little irritated. And that's from people in the diaspora and from Africa. And then we've received a lot of messages out of Africa that were very positive and very warm and very understanding. And so I decided to read these two for a number of reasons because they have two different opinions in them and they were very respectful in their approach to us. Okay. Now, this first message I'm going to read, I got this one first, and then the other one um, came after this one. But we've gotten many of you who responded on the actual videos that we did. And we've gotten many of you who have sent us emails and or correspondence on Facebook. Now, the one I'm reading now is a message from Facebook. OK, I'm not going to read the names of the individuals, but um, I will put the messages up on the screen. Now, this one says. I resonate with your concerns over AU ambassador speech. For 38 years now, we have suffered at the hands of ruthless presidents who took over from white rule. Those who speak against the injustices disappear. Others are maimed. They boastfully termed the maiming short sleeves and long sleeves to mean having your hand cut from midway or from the shoulder, respectively. Women are also raped. This August, as people got to speak out about vote rigging, they unleashed the army and seven people were shot dead. This year, formal petitions were made for the AU to intervene against the injustices. But up to now, they are quiet about it. They fully endorsed our corrupt leader who got to the throne by manipulating state institutions. The court gave him the victory, not the people. He is now trying to solicit legitimacy. The army is at his disposal to keep him in power. The AU's silence at our corrupt leadership makes us think that the AU board is corrupt too. They are greedy too. Otherwise, they could be disciplining corrupt leaders and also making sure that the people's vote counts during elections. They don't care about the people's well-being. Their God is their belly. So please be cautious in your dealings with the AU and African leaders. Okay, now that is one of many correspondence that we got like this from people out of Africa. These are people who actually live in Africa. Now here's one that's um, a lot more positive but very respectful in favor of the AU. Now this one says, Shalom. I am an African who loves your teachings and is greatly blessed by them. I noticed, however, that on your latest video, you questioned the sincerity of the, U the AU ambassador's message. I believe that she is sincere in her message. Indeed, there is a new crop of leadership on the continent that is willing to build bridges with all of our, her lost children. When the AU ambassador was addressing Afro-Americans, her message was for them specifically because that was her audience at the time. I believe that she had, I'm sorry, I believe that had she been talking to Afro-Caribbeans, her message would have been tailored accordingly. In regards to the call to action from the AU ambassador, the issue of raising funds for Afro-Americans to come together as a corporate body to invest in Africa. Insofar as the dislike mis mistrust between Afro-Americans and Africans is concerned, sadly, it stems from false messaging designed to foster the hate and mistrust. However, with more exposure, we pray that things will change. Please look up Project Joseph. It's a beautiful Ghanaian initiative for African-Americans and Africa Africans to unite and support each other. My most heartfelt love from Africa. May the Most High El Elyon continue to bless you and keep you. Shalom. Now, both of those messages were um, presented in a fashion to where they were respectful. 
Um, I'm not going to really harp on those that were disrespectful, such as saying that uh, we don't need your money and things of that nature. So we got we we got some very positive um, messages and correspondence, and we had some that were a little kind of salty. But the subject at hand here, and I wanted to address both letters, and I do believe that they were written in sincerity, and they have two different varying opinions about how we should proceed in regards to the ambassador speech. Now, one thing I want to say, um, other issues about the AU and the ambassador directly were brought up by other YouTubers. Okay. I'm not going to really get into those things too much, only to point out the fact that some talked about the Freemasonry aspect in which those are things we should consider. Um, and some talked about the connections of the AU with these other organizations. What I want to deal with mostly here, and maybe I'll touch on some of those things later, but what I wanted to deal with is uh, what is happening in Ghana versus what the AU is uh, proposing are two different things and they should not be mixed. That causes confusion when they are mixed because what Ghana is offering is totally different than what the AU is proposing. Ghana is offering repatriation back to Ghana and they are offering land in Ghana to us as individual Afro-Americans and anyone in the diaspora. They are offering our return home. That is a true call for a return home, what Ghana is offering. Now, I keep hearing others um, saying that the AU is calling us home. That is not what that speech was about at all. And many of us have been able to cue in on the statement, best of the best, in which they gave very clear um, indications of who they were going to bring back. Okay, not to harp on that too much again, because it, everyone is able to listen to the speech on their own. And a lot of confusion also in this where a lot of people are thinking that we're saying we shouldn't deal with Africa, uh, we shouldn't go back to Africa. And those are that is not what we are saying. Watchman and I and our children for a very long time have been talking about going back to Africa before some of our children were even born. We we just went on this, this spree of watching documentaries about what's going on in the continent. As a matter of fact, before we even came into the truth, um, we were considering going back to Africa because we we would love to be among our people. So many times you'll have those who are um, hearing what they want. And we, we, we would rather that we all reason with one another and understand every point that is being made. OK, let's understand every point that is being made. Now, everyone can draw their own conclusion about whether the AU OK, let's forget about the ambassador. Just scratch her out. She seems like a very um, lovely woman. OK, her speech was awesome. But if you look at what is being said in the speech, don't draw conclusions that that is a call home. As a matter of fact, we just found out that the ambassador lives only a few hours away from us. She lives in Tennessee. She lives only a few hours away from us. And she has a beautiful, sprawling mansion. Um, someone, thank you to the person who sent us the article. Uh, she's a very successful doctor here in America. Um, and she, ha she and her husband both have set up very wonderful lives for themselves. They are both doctors, very professional. Um, they live on a former slave plantation. This is, this is what the article states. And um, doing quite well for themselves. And so guess what? I was excited to know that she only lives um, a few hours um, away from us. That's that's exciting news. But if we want to deal specifically with the AU and not necessarily the ambassador, let's deal with that. Many of you out of Africa, I want to deal with those out of Africa. Many of you have stated that the AU cannot be trusted. Now, that's not coming from us. This is a lot of people out of Africa. Those here in the U.S., many of us are stating that um, we have two different opinions here, too. Many here are stating that we should trust the AU and let's send our funds. That's what many of our people here are stating. OK, now, many of us 
in which this is the position that Watchmen and I hold, we are saying, look, uh, we want to do some research. We want to have some questions answered. We would like to um, look further into what is being offered to us instead of just saying, OK, uh, let's just pour our money in blindly. This is what we were saying, because we have to understand that the AU is connected. They are connected with foreign nationals, foreign companies, foreign countries, and they are beholden to them. They owe them money. There are there are a lot of things to consider. And so our question in which the first uh, letter that I read to you, um, someone who lives in Africa, they have concerns because their 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 concern is that the AU is not helping the people on the continent that are already there. And so they said that we should please be cautious in our dealings with the AU and African leaders. Now, if you all remember, the ambassador said this with her own mouth that we should not focus. This is what she said, right? We are not saying this. The ambassador said we should not focus on the African leaders that are corrupt, but we should focus on the foreign leaders that are corrupt. Now, from an investment standpoint, I would say we need to focus on both. How do we get both out of the picture? Because one because one is getting more money doesn't make him any worse than the one who is only getting $1 billion. You all catch what I'm saying here? It doesn't matter that the African leader is only getting $1 billion of corrupt money. I think had certain things not been stated in the speech, and um, please understand where I'm coming from, Sister Mary, who sent the second letter. I thank you for um, your respect and how you approached us. We love you for that. We love our people in Africa. I mean, even before we knew that we were the Israelites, when I was a child and I thought we were all Hamites, I loved my people then. I cried for my people as a child. You see, because of American propaganda, having us think that Africa was just nothing but um, famine and uh babies with big bellies and flies in their eyes. When I was a child, I want you all to understand my mindset here. As a child, I cried for my people, black indigenous people, whether they were Ham or Shem. And I didn't even know that we were anything other than Ham because of what the Christian church taught. So I'm coming from a position of love, period. But I'm older. I'm not a child anymore. And so now I'm able to look at people for what they are. Right. I see our former colonialist for what they are. I see our own people for what they are. Uh, those that are repentant, those that are not. I see Gentiles that are repentant, those that are not, you see. And with all of that in mind, all we are saying is that we have to have a clear mind when making major decisions. This is why they they meaning the whole world looks at us so-called African-Americans specifically as liquid money because we jump and make irrational decisions without investigation. Many were hyped by the speech. I remember when I first started listening to the speech and I was hearing what she was saying about King Leopold and all of that. These are things that Watchmen and I have studied. We study history a great deal because of the documentary projects that we put together. So we want to know who our enemies are. We want to know who our people are. We want to know who the population of the world are. And so that being said, we have done lots and lots of research in history. And this is something that we study constantly because this is what we need to do. We need to understand what has taken place. We know things have been changed and swapped out. Lies have been passed down from generation to generation. So much is happening. And so it behooves all of us to be cautious and to ask questions and not to jump so quickly. Now, it can be a little disheartening when you see uh, the, the disagreements among our people, but disagreements are just that. We don't have to fall out of love with each other. Some of you, you get starchy in your heart, you uns unsubscribe and you block people and you... Um, 
unfriend them. All of that stuff should not occur because of a conversation. Now, I don't see a problem with blocking someone who's cussing you out and and just being belligerent. We've had to block people before, racist people um, and even our own people who threaten you and say all kinds of things against you, call you out of your name. I mean, we don't have as much time to do those things now. As you see, anytime you can go, you can go on any one of our YouTube videos that are dealing with certain topics, especially racial topics. And you'll see just hundreds of comments from Gentiles calling us the N word and calling us all kinds of names. Now, if we see them, we'll have a chance to delete them. But because we literally get thousands of, of comments and messages daily, we just don't even bother anymore. Now, I said that to say this in the wake of these discussions, we've had some very bitter um, accusations hurled. Now, there's nothing wrong with having an opinion. There's nothing wrong with having disagreements. But when when it uh, when you allow things to get in your heart and you start doing different things and saying different things, you've actually crossed out of the spirit and you're in the flesh zone. You see, you are in the carnal zone. Someone called me, um, said, why don't you just shut up, um, Deborah, you ugly B-I-T-C-H, you see? And so I'm like, wow, all of this because we have an opinion that our people should be careful. But that shows you the heart and the nature of people that conversations can't be had when you can't give an opinion without being called out of your name. I'm OK with that. If that's what you feel I am, then you and the most I have to deal with that. You have to deal with him. You have to answer to him for that. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. If that's what you feel that I am, that is your opinion. But again, these conversations need to be had. These questions need to be asked. And for those of you who think that we are trying to tell people not to deal with Africa, not to invest in Africa, you got it wrong. We we presented other ideas. Many have presented other ideas. Uh, we've gotten messages from our own people here that kind of align with what Watchmen and I talked about. We thought it would be an excellent idea for many of us in the diaspora to pool our resources and to go into Africa and actually set up our own villages with monies that we have pooled together, set up our own villages and our own businesses that will help the economy in Africa and being there on the ground, we will actually be able to see and oversee things firsthand and not just through um, phone conversations or conference calls or emails or videos that are put up on YouTube. We'll be there actually in the flesh able to deal with these things. That sounds a lot more appealing. This is why I say we should not combine what is going on in Ghana with what the AU has presented. Because what is happening in Ghana is, is something, this is not new. Many of you are presenting this as if it's something new. Now, the, the, to me, what they're doing right now is a celebration, a 400-year celebration. But they have, it's been years that they have uh, presented to us that we, as African Americans and other um, areas in the Caribbean, South America, Canada, the, and, and Europe, and other areas around the world, it's been years that Ghana has said, look, you all can come back home. We want you home. And that is a beautiful thing. They've offered land. That is something totally different. And so because many times we get very emotional when a message is being brought, when we don't all agree, we we tend to hear what we want. You, Many of you missed the fact that we have said a number of times that what app, what Ghana is offering is much better. You see, is much better because we must consider that the AU have their own financial woes that they need to deal with. And so I would have definitely have some questions before putting money or sending money into their hands. But what is the problem with accomplishing the same thing by actually going there to Africa, setting up businesses? Because the AU, the ambassador, told us to ignore the corrupt, the corrupt black African leaders. To me, that is a red flag. Now, again, I enjoyed her speech. 
And I'm sorry if this offends anyone, but look at what we are saying here. We do want to come to Africa. We would like to invest in Africa, but we we are just thinking that we would rather deal with um, an organization that is not connected to these foreign nationals, these foreign leaders, an organization that is not beholden to the EU, the UN, China, India, or any of these other nations. We would prefer to deal on those terms. So we're just asking for understanding those of us who share the same opinion about this. Now, some of our people have already said that they're ready to start just sending their money to the AU. And to that, I say to each his own. We can't stop you. All we are saying is just do your own research. But if you feel that no research is necessary and that you don't need to ask any questions and that all is well, all is fair, and that what these other Africans are telling us about the AU is simply not true and that they are just blowing smoke and that is how you feel, then by all means, um, wire the money, send it however you're going to do it, uh, putting it to a credit union that's going to send the money to the AU that is fine. We cannot stop you. Okay. We cannot stop you if that is the route you choose to take. But many of us are saying what Ghana is offering sounds very, very promising to us, you see. And prior to all of this, prior to all of this, and see, one thing I wanted to make, make um, clear, something is very, very interesting about the timing. Everyone knows that we are up on that 400 year mark, right? Now, we're not we're not sure what's going to happen when 2019 crosses over because times have been messed up. You know, the Europeans have the scripture said they would think to change times and laws. So January 1st, February 1st, March 1st, April 1st, 2019, for all we know, um, we may still be waiting, you see, but that marks the 400 years. For all we know, something um, spectacular is going to happen. We also have to keep in mind, and I know this is something different, um, the Gregorian calendar seems to be something that everyone is going according to when it comes to the 2019, right? You're using the Gregorian calendar for that, for the 400 years. But when it comes to other things, we're not using the Gregorian calendar. We actually observe the feast days according to Yah's calendar. You see, and so there's a lot of things to consider here. Uh, maybe something spectacular is going to happen during that time on a large scale. I'm not talking about a small scale, a large scale. Maybe not. We don't know. We shall see. But it is interesting that the AU um, is presenting this proposal to us now at the at the beginning of the 400 year mark. But what Ghana is presenting to us, they've presented to us before. And so for them, they're saying, hey, this is a celebration, the 400 year return. So theirs seems OK to me. It's right on time. Nothing seems fishy about what they're doing because they it's been years that they have offered this to us. Right. But the AU, on the other hand, it, it's just really strange, really strange their timing because they are indebted to these other nations. And that makes us leery. Now, again, those of you who want to go ahead with this, that is your right. But please don't tell us that we don't have a right to have questions as it relates to the AU or the ambassador speech. And we are not telling you not to return to Africa. Two different things going on here. One thing is an investment. And one thing is a real call to return. The AU is not doing that. They are not calling you home. They are asking for your money. Ghana is calling you home. Two different things. So they should not be mixed by any means. And so I just wanted to address these two letters here. These two emails or messages. We've received many. And um, I do think... From where I sit, I would not be um, comfortable sending money to the AU. And I doubt whether they're willing to sever their ties with these other nations. They owe them lots of money. Okay. 
they are beholden to them. As a matter of fact, the AU was put together by these other nations. And so shouldn't we have concerns about that? Now, it wouldn't be such a big concern because the scripture talked about how these other nations are actually going to bring us back home, right? Now, if the AU came to us and said, China and um, the European Union and um, India and all of these other nations, just say all of them. If the AU came to us and said that all of these other nations were giving them money to bring us back home, that they were going to fund the whole trip, that they were going to pay for the, the transportation for us to have homes and all of that, I will, then I will say, wow, this is a biblical prophecy. Did you all hear what I just said? If the AU came to us and said that China and all of these other foreign nationals or countries are going to pay for all of us in the diaspora to return home, that would sound like prophecy to me. We can't make things fit that don't fit family. If, if we're going to accept this as fulfillment of prophecy, then why not just throw the Bible out and say, well, we don't have to deal with this over here because this right here is right now, here and now. Because it has to fit. And right now, um, us paying the AU money doesn't fit. You see... Now, as far as just wanting to go back to Africa, um, again, there are groups of our people here. And uh, there was men mention of the Joseph product project, Project Joseph. Now, we know people here, our own people. We know of people. I don't know them personally, but we know of people here that are involved in Project Joseph. Please, let's not mix Project Joseph up with the AU. Okay. Let's not mix those two up, okay? Because th these are two different things. And there's a lot of repetition in what I'm saying because I want you all to analyze things. I want you all to look into things because this is a big move. Any of us who have uh, considered moving to Africa or even thought about it in the least, that's a big move. One person mentioned, and this this is someone here, they said most of us can't even afford to move across the, st the city or to another state. So how can we afford to move back to Africa? Now, another thing to consider, there may be large groups of us. As a matter of fact, someone said there's more than 20,000 African Americans who actually have repatriated back to Ghana. And that number could be higher for all we know. That 20,000 does not um, equal to an exodus when you have hundreds of millions in the diaspora between North and South America, the Caribbean, um, Canada is a part of North America, and then also in, in the, U, the UK and Europe and other regions of the world too. Our people are all over. And so just 20,000 out of hundreds of millions does not constitute an exodus. This is just a group of people who went back home, which is fine. But we have to consider this. Someone else brought to the, to the table that a lot of our people are in prisons. We have our older people in nursing homes. We have our poor people in projects all around America. So if you're saying that the Most High only has this gathering or return home for those who can financially afford to do so, that's definitely not prophecy. Nowhere in prophecy does it say that our elderly and our men and those who are poor living in ghettos are going to uh, be stuck here because they can't afford to pay their way. Everything has to be looked at, okay? And so for those of you who want to go back to Africa, um, we would consider doing it the Ghana way. But if you wanted to do it the, uh, the AU way, that is totally up to you. Okay, that is up to you. So again, I just wanted to bring these two letters to your attention here. And with all due respect to those who sent those to us, we appreciate you reaching out to us. And those of you who have sent us messages um, 
concerning this subject as well. We appreciate that. Uh, those of you here in the diaspora who have the ideas of setting up um, corporations here in, US, in the U.S. and also in Africa, I love that idea. That is very similar to what Watchman and I were saying to do, that we should pool our monies here um, and we should set up businesses in Africa, you know, us working together. Now, the idea of doing it here and there, that sounds that sounds excellent. And um, if that is the direction the Most High wants us to go in, he will definitely make a way for that. Um, the one thing that we have to keep in mind, the Most High says in his word constantly, wait, I say on Yahuwah, wait on Yahuwah. Let's not move with our emotions. Let's not, not move in our own direction, but be completely led of Yah. When you are led of Yah, you cannot go wrong. Wait, I say on Yahuwah. Don't be moved by your circumstances. Be moved by Yah. Shalom, family.